All right, so you know I like to get started by tackling the most difficult parts of an application first. Uh, and in this case, there's going to be a couple of rough spots along the way that I foresee. And so I want to start tackling those first. Uh, I think the first thing that we're going to run into is just we need to make sure that we know how to make calls out to the Marvel API and get information back and then deserialize anything we get back into instances of classes that we can then work with inside of our application. So uh, here are the general steps that you're going to need to go through to work with the Marvel API in your own application. First of all, you're going to need to sign up for a developer account and you can see that I am already at the URL developer.marvel.com and you'll see a, a link here to get started and it will walk you through the process of creating your own account. Very simple. They don't ask for very much. They just want to keep tabs on uh, on, uh, on wh who's using their, their API and why, okay? Because they do have some restrictions on, on monetizing and I would just want you to read that and make sure you know what you're getting yourself into if you ever think about utilizing the Marvel API in an application that you intend to distribute in the Microsoft Store. So I'm not a lawyer, I'll leave you be uh, that between you and Marvel. However, uh, after you create your developer account, the next thing you're going to want to do is then kind of learn how to use it. And fortunately, the interactive documentation is awesome. Uh, you can Take a look at the various ways in which the API can be called and what you can retrieve. And so, for example, uh, you can get a list of characters or just get a single character or get all the comics for a single character or all the events or series or stories for a single character. You can get a list of comics. Uh, you know, you can filter them in certain ways. Uh, you can get a specific comic and find all the characters in that comic. And those who created that comic and the events and the stories associated with that comic. Okay, so you get the idea. Now, once you see here this uh, this high-level overview of API calls, you can click into one and you can learn a little bit more about what it does and what it gives you back. In this case, these are the, I guess you can say, this is the model, the classes and the properties of information that will be returned to you whenever you make a call into this particular API, all right? And you can even see that they have a interactive environment where you can test out the input of parameters. So in this case, for example, show me all characters that start with the letters SP, but only give me 10 characters back, all right? And then you can click the Try It Out button. It'll show you the request URL. So in this case, it's that URL that we saw at the very top here of uh, slash v1 slash public slash characters you know appended on to their API uh, URL gateway.marble.com colon 80 slash v1 and then you pass in as query string parameters those filter uh, key value pairs so name starts with equals SP limit equals 10 and then you also need to supply an API key and we'll talk about that in just a moment and then you get back this long passage of JSON and you can see so there's some information here at the very top with which is just um, you know that we succeeded and it gave us a success code of 200 if it failed we'd be able to see that there are various reasons why it could potentially have failed um, attribution text in HTML that has to be added if you're using this in the context of a uh, of a uh, web application uh, again that's between you and Marvel you need to kind of uh, work through that and understand what the legalities of this are but then ultimately we get to the actual results themselves in this case we have 10 characters that have been brought back uh, with a total of 33 that match the criteria so we say just bring back the first 10 that start with the letter SP and you can see here this first character uh, is Spacker Dave and doesn't have a description, uh, does have a thumbnail image. Uh, there, in some of the cases, the characters just don't have a lot of information. They might be a fairly obscure character. In other cases, there might be a lot more information about a given character. Uh, let's see, here we go. Speed is a good example. 
description. Tommy Shepard might be the son of Scarlet Witch in the vision. Hmm. All right, uh, thumbnail, a resource URI so they can get more information about this specific character. Then the number of comics that this uh, character was in. So we have a collection of two items, two individual comic books that uh, this character was featured in, the number of series that they were featured in, the number of stories that they were involved in, and so on. And then we move on uh, to the next uh, character speed demon and so on okay so uh, first of all let's talk about this API key when you sign up for a developer account you're going to uh, be able to view uh, this my developer account link here at the top and you're going to be given a public key and a private key uh, and anytime you make a call to the API you're going to need to pass along either uh, just the public key as you saw we did a moment ago or some combination of public and private key hashed together we'll talk about that in just a moment now if you're using this in a web application you need to list the URLs that you plan on calling uh, the 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 API from in this case developer.marvel.com is one place that we were able to use our public key to make a call into and grab data from the Marvel API however if you go to the how to section under authorization you'll learn that there's uh, this works only for client side applications uh, if you were to create what they call a server side application or uh, in our case like a client application you're gonna need su to supply a little bit more information to them in fact what you're gonna have to do is provide a hash and a hash as they listed here is an MD5 digest of the timestamp parameter your private key and your public key so a hash is basically an algorithmic computation based on a public key and a private key that's own uh, known to only two parties so um, basically you uh, there, there are many different hash algorithms that are available uh, and MD5 is actually one of the weaker uh, algorithms but the stronger the algorithm the more computational power it required to actually calculate the hash so there's a trade-off there but essentially what this is going to do is ensure that nobody has tampered with the request from the client to the server and uh, you essentially take again the timestamp the private key the public key you run this MD5 uh, algorithm against those those values and you'll come out with a hash that'll be appended at the end of every call that we're gonna make into the Marvel API so we just have to figure out how to do that in C sharp unfortunately there are classes in the uh, Universal Windows platform that will help us to accomplish that okay uh, so what we're gonna do is go back here and in the interactive documentation let's talk for a moment about what it is that our application will accomplish what we're gonna do is create uh, the hero explorer application which will just uh, show us randomly a number of, of characters from the Marvel Universe and so that we can click through and learn a little bit more about them I mean I never knew that there was a character named um, what was it uh, speed a moment ago <laughs> that's interesting I mean if you're into the folklore of Marvel and most of us geeks uh, have been at some point in our lives right so what we want to do is just say hey I just want 10 random characters uh, from the Marvel database and what I'm going to do is generate an offset so I know that there are approximately 1500 characters in the database what I'll do is just r randomly get a number from 1 to 1500 or 1490 and say hey that's my offset so a random number might be 520 for example and I'll say beginning at number 520 return me the next 10 records uh, in uh, from the the Marvel database so I typed in the limit 10 and the offset 520 and let's see what we get back as a result of that they're in alphabetical order whoops okay sometimes this will happen where you get a um, where you get a 500 response code that's a problem on their side so you can try to run it again or even maybe change up some of the properties here uh, let's go with uh, 350 instead and try that out okay and that seemed to work um, 
So not really sure what the issue was, but you got to just kind of work through some of these things, right? Uh, so in this case, we start with the letter E. So we're looking at earthquake. Never knew that uh, that character. Uh, then there's uh, the one after that is echo, right? And then the one after that, Eddie Brock. Okay, and we could go on and on from there. All right, so what we want to do at this point now that we kind of have a game plan of how we're going to make a call into the API, what we need to do is take the resulting uh, um, JSON and convert it into C Sharp classes like we did for the weather app when we made calls into the Open Weather Map API. So what I want to do is get a good representative um, um, set of, of JSON that I can use to give the JSON to C Sharp. If we get, if we get some results that don't have uh, a lot of results in them, um, then we may not get uh, the right results when we go to JSON to, to C Sharp. And so I guess what I'm trying to say is what I want to do is just type in like spider whoops, spider man, and say, give me just two results. Now I know that they'll have, it'll be fully fleshed out, right? And that will give me a good representative JSON sample to then hand over to JSON 2 Sharp. Now let's get rid of the offset, and let's go ahead and try that out. And yes, see, I get a name, a great description. I get a good thumbnail. So there, all of this information is, is populated. And I feel really good about taking this snippet of code of all of this that's been returned, highlighting it all, getting it out of my clipboard by hitting Control C, and then going to JSON to csharp.com and pasting in my JSON, and then clicking Generate. And again, I just want to emphasize the reason why I wanted to get a good representative sample of JSON for a character that had a lot of data was because when we when when JSON to C sharp looks at that JSON, it's going to parse it all out and figure out um, the classes to create. And so if it's missing information, then it will use something generic like object instead of character you know and it may it may omit certain classes where there just wasn't data in the representative json that we pasted in okay hopefully that makes sense so i'm going to copy all of this to my clipboard and then i'm going to open up visual studio and actually create a new project called hero explorer And one of the first things I'll do is I'm going to add a new folder called models. And in that folder, I'm going to add a new class that I'm going to call, um, well, here's what I'm going to do. Let's go back here to the Marvel developer, developer portal and go to the very top. And we can see the response classes. Uh, at the topmost level, there's something called a character data wrapper and character data container. So the character data wrapper will contain data, and the character data container will contain results, which is an array of character class. So let's call this character data wrapper. All right, and what I'm going to do is just paste in everything that I have on my clipboard from JSON to C Sharp. And now I'm going to look through this closely and look for these instances where we have, for example, something very generically named, like item, for example. I see that item is actually in single instance from this comics class. So what I might do is this instead. I might rename this from from item to comic. So now uh, the comics class will have a list of items called uh, a list of items of type comic. Same thing would be true for series. Now unfortunately series the pluralization of that word is a little tricky. Um, so I might say uh, I might call this a series list and then name this a series and then name this a, and 
a series list will have a list of series. All right. Same thing with stories. Uh, so this would become a story class, and we would have a uh, a list of story called items in our stories class, and then we'll do the same thing with events. So we'll just name this event, and then we'll have a list of events called items. Uh, but as we get down here to these bottom items, what I want to do is actually reuse the names of things that Marvel used. So we're going to call this topmost object not a root object, but instead we're going to call it the character data wrapper. All right, and then we're also going to um, use character data container here. And furthermore, uh, I can see that each of the individual characters is of type character. So I'm going to change that as well. There, it's not a result, it's a character, right? And so we should have a list of character. And this should give us change from data to character data container. Now I just want to kind of look through this and make sure everything's good. Like this shouldn't be series anymore, this should be series list, right? And uh, I've, I'll take my time and kind of work my way through this. And I need to be pretty careful here because once I go to uh, deserialize some JSON into these classes, it, it needs to work. <laughs> It'll be difficult to, to, to hunt down what's not working. Okay, uh, so far so good. And I think the next thing that we're going to do here is, well, actually let's stop. And uh, what I want to do is actually create a class. So here, let me just at this topmost level, um, add a new class. And I need a way to access the Marvel API programmatically. Um, and so what I'm going to do is create a, um, a Marvel facade. And a facade is a special name in software development that that is a, a design pattern for creating a layer of code over a dependency that you don't have control over. So we want to create a nice friendly way to call into the Marvel API from C Sharp uh, and behind the scenes the Marvel facade will be delegated the responsibility of going out uh, um, retrieving results, parsing them, putting them into uh, into our model class and then delivering the delivering them back all right and so the Marvel facade will also have private helper methods to create uh, construct that URL that will wind up passing into Marvel that will include not only the API call itself plus any filtering parameters but then also it'll contain the um, uh, the md5 hash that we need to pass along with uh, with the public private and um, keys and then also the timestamp all right, so let's make this a public static. Well, there, we'll just make it a public class, and then we'll create a single method called um, public static void for now get character list. All right, and I know I'm going to need to make a call into um, HTTP client. So I'm going to add that to my project by going to the Manage NuGet Packages. And I'm going to search for, uh, what am I searching for here? HTTP Client. All right. And we'll go ahead and install that. All right. Very good. And I think that's all that I'm going to do just to kind of keep this uh, these videos kind of scoped uh, small and not too long. So let's stop right here. And in the next video, we're going to, um, uh, to actually make a call out to Marvel and grab characters in JSON and then um, deserialize them into our character data wrapper model. All right. So we'll see you in the next video.